Hello to you all. I'm Jenny Sauer. I'm a member of the End User Tools Group. I'm here to present and welcome you to the Exotic Moth Trapping Data Collection using the mobile application called ArcGIS Field Maps. And it is for many of us much anticipated. This is the first year of this application's use for 2023. And um, so I'm here to introduce you to it. There's a couple things you'll need to know. I'm going to place two links in the chat and walk you through them. One note, the warehouse beetle decoy traps data will not be recorded using this map. So that's a note I have from your uh, national operations manager, Lisa Jackson. So first, let's dive into these two links. Um, I've just placed them in the meeting chat. And what happens is if, if folks join later, they won't see them. So I'm going to try really hard to remember to add them again at the end of our training. If I don't, please, someone feel free to poke me on that. Um, so these two links are really important resources for you. The first one is the mobile data collection tools page. This is where you'll find all kinds of training support. It is a public APHIS website, meaning state cooperators can find this as well. It is publicly accessible from any web browser. We have um, a couple of pages up off the top half of this page, the training events calendar, where you will find other training events um, and you can register for them and mark your calendar if you'd like general training documents. We'll reference this a little bit in regards to ArcGIS field maps training. This is where you will find a user guide, an internal user guide to using field maps. The pest program specific training documents page is good enough to go there. So let's go there. We have a list of pest programs with mobile applications assigned. And here we have exotic moth. And under exotic moth, you have two documents that will help you out with data entry. One is a user manual and one is a quick reference guide. And the user manual is going to take you step by step through the things we do today. So if you like seeing things in writing or looking back to see the steps, that's a good place for you to look. Moving back to the main page, the bottom half of this mobile data collection tools page as it loads, I'll just tell you, um, is a video gallery. Here we go. And the video gallery, um, some of you may have already explored this a little bit under the foundations category. There is a 10 series video self-paced training that you can take yourself through specific to ArcGIS field maps. That's the application we're using here today. So you can um, take yourself through that. Also under the pest programs category is the training that we're doing here today. So it's being recorded. And if you give me mm, about a week, I can usually get this recording up here you can either, <coughs> excuse me, search for it here in the search box, or what you'll find is it should appear up at the top left here as as a new as the one of the newest recordings, but it will be made available there for you to find later. Maybe maybe I moved too fast. Maybe you'd like to see something again. Um, a colleague that couldn't make it today, or many use these video trainings as a refresher app maybe a month or two after you've started collecting data just to be sure you're on track and remember things correctly. So that will show up here under the video gallery. Again, give me about a week. The second link is a link to this training quiz. So this training quiz you don't have to take, but I'm giving it to you early. And it's a really great way to test your knowledge, especially when it's fresh in your brain and just really cement the ideas in. And a couple of benefits here. The third question in is asking for your email address. And you can type this in. It could be any email address, actually. But uh, you want to type this in with care because I've attached an automation to this question. And so once you submit your quiz, you'll get an automated email answering to this question, this email address that you've put in, which says, basically, congratulations, you've completed the training. So um, it'll give you a little kudos for having attended this training. Some supervisors like to see this. 
I, I know for me personally, I like to have these kinds of things. I keep them in a little folder and look back at my year or quarter and see what I've done. Um, and also there's a benefit for me. It kind of helps me track some metrics and make sure that when I teach these things that others are hearing them and getting the gist. So it helps me out too. Again, it's not meant to be um, something to, to add anxiety to your day, but it will really help if you take this quiz and kind of help make sure that you're understanding these points as they're being made. Okay, and again, I'm gonna try to remember to place these back in the chat um, at the end of the day or at the end of this training. I'm gonna put a little poll up because I'm kind of curious to know this. Um, the poll is asking you what mobile device you plan to use to collect exotic moth data. And um, I've got the two choices up there, iPad or iPhone, and that helps me kind of decide what to share with you today. And maybe you're not sure, and that's okay at this point. You're going to want to be sure, but um, thank you for doing that. I see it seems to be leaning, it's pretty close half-half, but leaning a little bit heavier in the iPhone side. So that's good to know. Um, thank you very much for doing that. I'm gonna give you three more seconds, two, one, and I'm gonna go ahead and end that poll. So we have maybe three more users that uh, are planning on using an iPhone. That's great to know, thank you for doing that. Um, so there's a couple of caveats um, really to pay attention to or warnings with using an iPhone because they tend to come with a cellular data plan and we tend to think they're, they're going to work just as you expect. And so just a couple warnings I'm going to keep in mind. I will be able to demonstrate um, use of the exotic moth trapping map and data collection. I'm going to use my iPad. It's a bigger screen for your view, but I will make sure to show what that looks like on an iPhone too. Um, again, if I don't, somebody ping me, I'm happy to do that. But I want to make sure you can see the difference of the view. It really comes down to just a smaller screen and kind of navigating that. Um, so you should have at your ready a mobile device that you feel comfortable using. You should feel comfortable using the ArcGIS Field Maps application. We just started using that last year in other applications, so you may be familiar with it from last year. But if not, um, I would encourage you to kind of refresh that knowledge and make sure that you feel comfortable. Survey protocol is going to be, um, you're going to want to go to your National Operations Manager. That's Lisa Jackson. So if you have questions about what needs to be entered or in what way that's a lisa jackson question and today i'm just going to make sure to walk you through how to use this data form as it was designed to collect data so i'm going to try to stick it to my lane this is kind of like a little visual to kind of give you the idea of the path that we're going to take to climb to the top and get that trophy um, maybe you got your work boots on maybe you don't look so spiffy as he does um, i know i don't um, but there are some steps to get to the top there and and this training here is really the top the end of it so there's some foundational training um, as I mentioned, you're going to want to know how you're going to want to feel pretty comfortable with the device you're using, whether that's an iPad or an iPhone. So feel like you have a device you know how to use. You're going to want to understand survey protocol for exotic moths. And if you don't, again, go to Lisa Jackson and make sure that you have direction on that. You're going to want to feel comfortable with field maps, and I can help with some of that, um, and, and so we'll look into that a little bit. As I mentioned, ArcGIS Field Maps has a user guide and a video series. Take advantage of that, please. And then even though your National Operations Manager, Lisa Jackson, is responsible for communicating survey protocol requirements, this training is your quick stop just to make sure you understand how to use the application as it was designed to collect data for exotic moss. So I'm going to get you to this little, this top bit. And if you haven't completed some of these steps, then this is the time for you to go back and make sure that you have those steps in view. Just a quick little funny picture. I just recently um, discovered what the name of this little worn pathway is. So we're looking at a photo where there's this nice sweeping garden path that goes around the outer rim in a sort of circular pattern. And humans have decided to just kind of walk through the middle of the grass to get to the other side, right? And enough humans doing this, you end up with a pathway just like this. 
And this pathway is called a desire path. So instead of taking the path that's been outlined, they've taken one that they desired more and, and more in a way, a, a little area there. Now, um, I thought this was really kind of an interesting idea because today I'm going to ask you not to take that desired path. I'm going to uh, go ahead and bounce an X over there. Um, I'd like to ask you if you would just humor me and stay on the designated path. So kind of like a welcome to the ride, <laughs> arms and legs in, please. Um, but please stay on the path. And specifically, since we have so many iPhone users, this comes up as an issue, although it applies to you iPad users as well. And what I'm talking about is making sure that you do the preparation to collect data while disconnected. And we'll overview that a little bit, but it's the big thing that I want you to stay on the path with, if you wouldn't mind humoring me and, and please, we'll, please stay on the path. Um, and we're gonna go over a couple of the reasons why that might make a lot more sense too. Um, but I know it's very easy when you have a cellular data plan and an iPhone in hand, and it looks like the map is working just great to stay live and connected um, to just go ahead and collect the data that way. It's an easy, easy thing to do. So we're going to look into that just a little bit. But I thought this was kind of an interesting way to look at it. Stay on the path. Don't take the desired path that maybe maybe some humans have worn through before and might look pretty good. So what we're going to talk about today, this is kind of just my little outline of objectives to cover. We're going to dive a little bit into that ArcGIS field maps application in the context of what it looks like to sign in. And in signing in, we do have two optional map. We have two maps. We have one official map for you to collect data in and then a training version. And so I want to show you that and make sure that those are clear when to sign in and, and how to use them. We're going to overview the disconnected workflow, of course, you know, I'm beating that one pretty hard today. Um, and then we're going to look at the layers involved in the exotic moth application. And we're going to go ahead and you and I together, we're going to enter some data in the data form. Hopefully by that point, we've covered some things that um, by that point will just be reminders. I'm going to try to make sure I've hit on all the things that end up in reminders, but we'll sum those up too. So just diving in, ArcGIS field maps. Again, make sure that you are familiar with this. It is relatively new. And even if you used it last year with another PEST program, it might be a good idea. In fact, I'd recommend you just review those self-paced videos. Um, you know, look at the list, pick and choose. Make sure that you have that disconnected workflow down, how to download an offline map, how to sign in and out make sure that you feel comfortable and confident in using that application. When you first open field maps, it looks something like this. You have the option to sign in with ArcGIS Online or sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise or skip sign in. And here in the federal government, we host our information in a protected FedRAMP moderate secured uh, portal and that is in the enterprise platform. So we will always tap this or select sign in with ArcGIS Enterprise in the red box. And once you do that, you'll get this menu of options. Actually, the first time you do it, you'll only get these bottom two. It'll say specify a new URL or scan code. And you're going to tap and specify, specify a new URL. That will open the keyboard and you will have to manually type in this URL. After that, you'll see what I'm, I'll give you a little red arrow here. You'll see this option. It will hold on to those URLs, actually multiple if needed. And then you can just tap on that URL itself instead of having to type it in again. So. Um, Field Maps does try to help you out with the sign in process. And once it knows an option, it'll hold on to it for you. Finally, there are, as I mentioned, End User Tools Group creates an official data collection map for you for Exotic Moth. And it creates a copy or a, a completely separate version just for training and practice. And that sign in is where this comes into play. So signing in to <laughs> excuse me, to ArcGIS field maps 
the, there are two separate ways to access these maps. And this is a question on your quiz, so here's a little freebie for you. Um, but the official data collection map is hosted on this top URL, maps.mrp. And the training version, which you should use to practice and play, and in fact, today I'll even use to demonstrate some data collection, is held in the maps-stg.mrp. And I'm going to give it a couple boxes here so you can see the difference in that URL that's typed in. The top one we call a production portal, and the bottom one is a staging portal. And what's really important to remember is that you want to be sure that you are entering real data, official data, in the official map. And, it, and you are definitely, most definitely, never entering practice, play, training, demo data in that official map. So you want to be sure that you're keeping those straight. Training or practice in the staging portal, official data, real data in that official MRP portal. And we'll look at that briefly. There are some ways to tell if you're in a training map. The training map titles start with, in all caps, the word training. That's helpful, right? Right there in the title. Um, also, the base map or the background of the map. Our training maps are kind of a light gray coloring, where the official map is a a brilliant imagery. You see the greens of the trees and the and the ground and everything. I'll try to show you the difference there. My iPad is signed into the stage portal today, and my iPhone is signed into the production portal. So I will play with and add data in the training map, as we should. And then when I go to show you what it looks like in the iPhone, I will show you that the difference between the maps, but we will not enter data. So that way we'll keep that um, give you a little example of what that looks like as well. The disconnected mode workflow really is hinged on the idea of being disconnected while connecting while collecting data and it all comes into play in this red box. So it all comes down to the office prep while connected to Wi-Fi. And and it's really of note that the ArcGIS field maps application was specifically designed to operate in a disconnected mode. It is assumed that this is a field data collection application that you will be out in the field with no, no access to Wi-Fi or limited or interrupted. And so the idea is that an area of interest is downloaded to your device while you're connected to a reliable network. And then I've added this little bullet point, a parking lot test. Really, it's a great idea once you feel like you've got a map area and you've disconnected from Wi-Fi before you leave that area, open it up and make sure it's behaving as you expect. And then you can go out into the day, collect data all day, um, followed by at the end of the day, returning to a reliable Wi-Fi connection, synchronize that data. And then I've added possibly this is when you would charge your device, right? So the really important part is this prep box. I'll give it a little twirl but also the sync is critical. So our exotic moth map is getting updated in its symbology for the schedule status of these trapping activities every night by a script that's being run. And so if you think of the synchronization as not being one way, but actually two ways in that it is pulling in those updated symbologies from those scripts. So it pulls into your downloaded map updates, but it also pushes up to the online hosted map service all of your edits that you've done during the day while disconnected. So that sync is really critical. As a matter of fact, I would recommend doing that before leaving and then again once returning with your data edits. It will keep your, your data in your map the most up to date. Um, some of the reasons I, I said I promised I would give you some reasoning for why a disconnected mode might be especially um, important. Um, some of the big problems we have with synchronization is an interrupted sync or a failed sync. And so you want to make sure that that is happening well while you are connected to a reliable Wi-Fi network. And if you're out there in the field collecting data live, um, there is always a possibility, even in an urban setting walking between buildings, that that Wi-Fi connection can be interrupted or not as reliable as you might think. So um, so for that reason, also, if you are operating while continuously connected, that map is constantly pinging that portal server for updates, and that puts a load on the server. 
finally, sometimes we don't like to talk about it, but sometimes those servers go down or have bugs that are getting fixed or are being worked on. There's a variety of reasons why contact with that server in a live fashion might not work in that moment. And if you are operating under the whole office prep where you are using a downloaded map area, your workflow is uninterrupted by those kinds of issues. So you can continue to collect data in the field, almost oblivious to the problem. You may not, you may hold off synchronizing if that server's down and, and wait on that, but it really doesn't interrupt your workflow. So it is highly recommended for you to go make sure that this office prep side is done and that you are using this disconnected mode workflow. You know, like I said, resist the desire to collect data while connected, stay on the path, that kind of idea. All right, so exotic moth data layers. This is just a screen grab from my iPad. So it's a little fuzzy. We'll look at it on the iPad too. You have two layers and they are toggled to on. So that's shown in the blue that are editable or we call them operational. These are the layers that you can add data to. And those are the exotic moth trap sites 2023 layer. This layer also has the activities table that is connected to it as it uh, nested within it and the exotic moth map notes points. So we'll talk about these two layers because these layers you can add data to. And then above it is the exotic moth trap schedule status layer that is defaulted to off and it is really just a symbology layer over the top. So the trap sites are symbolized by the schedule, the status, due or inactive, current, due or inactive. So they begin as current. And as I mentioned earlier, there is a nightly script that runs so that after 14 days, that schedule status symbol, if you were to turn it on or enable it, will show it to be due. And in another script that's also run is if a activity is performed and recorded, a removal activity is recorded, that script will catch that and will update that schedule status symbol to inactive. So I'll show you what that looks like just in a moment, but this is really just uh, for your view and so that you can monitor the trap status and whether it needs to be visited. Just below, we've got two BTM or box tree moth reference layers from last year. This might be helpful to turn on and reference what you're doing with exotic moth. And then finally, this on device layer markup layer here. This layer is here. It is a standard feature by default. Um, it's part of the application itself. Field maps, all of their maps have a markup layer. Um, I don't necessarily recommend using it. There's a couple things if you do use it. It is really inherent to your device. It's it's your ability to mark up your own map. So it's private to you. It's kind of like your own little notebook on the map. And it's kind of hard to share. So um, so it's private to you. Secondly, it is not an official data collection layer. So if this is being used in any way, be very, very careful <clears throat> that you're not sharing that you're not adding data here that should be on an official data layer, such as the trap sites or map notes points layer. So just be really careful if you do use the markup layer, just remember that it's private to you and that it should not contain any real data or official data and you know check with your supervisor on whether or how you might want to use that layer. Um, one thing that I want to make sure of is the trapping workflow as it kind of pertains to how the data goes into this form. And uh, so here's a kind of a little visual. Um, the first visit places the trap. And what, what I mean by that is it locates a, a geospatial point on the map and symbolizes that as current. So the first visit is placing a trap. And that data form also contains a field that asks for the installation date, install date, which means then the, the trap has been installed. That's your first activity. So that's all part of placing the trap. And then, <laughs> and then, sorry, um, all future visits are activities tied to that location or that placed trap. And we'll have a look at that, but I just wanted to give you that kind of nested visual. First, you're placing the trap that puts a point on the map, and then all activities select that trap site and add details on that activity. 
something that kind of gets some of us a little bit confused sometimes so i just thought i would cover it is when you have to relocate a trap for really any reason you know maybe there isn't a tree there anymore maybe that location just isn't conducive to the trap and you want to move it so if you think it through then you need to enter an activity on that original spot it, to remove the trap. So you'll go to that trap site, you'll go to the activity table, you'll enter data on removing the trap, and then you'll kind of walk that trap over to the new location and start at the beginning placing the trap. Now what kind of gets us, sometimes we forget to add this remove trap and we just kind of move it over. Um, and it is important to to record that last activity, but also some folks start thinking, well, shouldn't that trap site have disappeared off the map? And no, that's not right. It is correct that the trap site should remain. Remember that overnight script will update that trap status symbol to say inactive. So we have that telling us that that trap is no longer an active trap, but also the entire history of that trap location should be recorded and retained. So you'll have every visit there for that trap location and, and the last activity would be then remove so that's accurate and that's what that should look like all right so let's have a look at the data form and let's start with the trap sites layer i'm going to pull up my camera and give you the view of my ipad here look at this message isn't that interesting okay so i'm going to let the ipad have its moment and let's use the iphone instead which also has a passcode issue. <laughs> okay, but we got there. All right, so here is my PPQ iPhone. So I'm gonna go ahead and open field maps. And as I said, I'm logged into the production portal. How do I know that? I'm looking at a beautiful background. I'm gonna go back a little bit. And because I know I'm logged into the wrong portal, I'm going to sign out, which I do by going to my profile, scrolling down and tapping sign out. And that's going to give me um, a message. I'm going to say, yes, I want to sign out. And we are back to the beginning here, which you saw on those slides. I'll choose the enterprise portal. I'm going to choose, you can see it's listed both URLs for me. And I want the one that says STG because we're going to play a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and tap EAuth account. I'm going to do, well, I'm going to pull this aside here and see if I can get it to sign in, which usually I've got already in place and I apologize profusely. I don't know what my deal is with my iPad today. It's tired of helping me out maybe. Well, in the meantime, my iPad opened up. Let's go there. Let's let this happen. Um, and my iPad, I know that I'm signed in. I'm going to go back twice. And what it's done is it's it's tried to help me out. Um, it's kept me signed into stage to the training map portal and it pulled me into a map as you saw and I just went back until I got this main maps menu. Again, if I needed to sign out, I could go ahead and do that. I'm not going to. I've got a couple of hints here that I'm in training in training mode. You can see all these titles start with training and the thumbnails have training those little pictures there. And so I'm going to find the exotic moth uh, map here in our training area. And I can do that by scrolling down or I could start typing EX. There we are. And you can see on the device, I have some offline areas or at least one already downloaded. So I can go ahead and open that map card. Now I do want to point out, I am connected to Wi-Fi, which I've done on purpose to show you the difference. So Wi-Fi is connected here. And I have an online map and I have on device. You see how it's categorized? So the online map, if I was disconnected from Wi-Fi, I wouldn't be seeing that. But this is how, if I wanted to, I could go ahead and add an offline area. And you can see I did add an offline area. I know how big it is, megabytes wise, five days ago. And I've renamed it Exotic Moth with Windsor, which is my location center, and Street, which is the level of detail. So, um, <laughs> So here we are, I've got a downloaded map. I'm gonna go ahead and open that. And earlier we saw training in all the titles. Now you can see the difference in the base map. You see this light gray kind of dull color. 
Also, you do want to see this sync button along the top that the two arrows there that's your sync icon. And if you do not see this sync button, it means you're working live and that means you've gone on your desire path and that's not where I want you. So you do want to see this sync button that means I'm in an offline map. And one more thing here if I tap that the auto sync is also not enabled you see that that toggle is gray. So that is what you want. You do not want it auto syncing. If that is enabled, your device is going to be trying to look for any time it has a Wi Fi connection to sync your data. And it may not be a good actual connection. And so you don't want a partial sync or a failed sync. You want to make sure that when you synchronize your data, it's because you have decided you've connected to um, a really great Wi Fi connection and you feel confident hitting that button and then you'll hit that button. Um, the next icon over here is a, looks like a stack of papers, but it's a layers menu. And this is probably familiar. This was on the slide earlier. Um, and the only enabled layer right now, which you can see in the blue toggle is the trap sites layer. I'm gonna enable the map points layer as well. Just tap that toggle to toggle it on. And just for fun, I'm gonna to toggle this schedule status layer. Now, what that did was create a symbol on top of the trap status. And so you can see the symbols change. I'll turn that off. It's a little hard to see on this little screen. So without the schedule status and then with it. And, and then to see what these all mean, I'll close the layers menu. With those layers all enabled from the layers menu, I'm gonna show you the legend. So the schedule status says a check mark is current a minus sign is due and an X is active. So we do see an X inactive, sorry, inactive. We do see an X over on this one, which means if you remember back to that re, uh, relocate workflow, at some point there was a removal activity on this trap site itself. And so now it's inactive. So that gets updated. Then the trap sites themselves have a trap and lure combo assigned to each and then finally the map notes points layer has either hazard or info right there so that's how you would check that out i'm going to turn this schedule status layer off and i didn't mean to zoom so far in there we go so then let's say we want to add add data we're going to go ahead and and tap this add data button and remember the first part of the workflow is placing that trap so we're going to add data and then we will choose from the combinations of trap and lure. Here, uh, let's see, I'm going to pick something I don't have on screen just for the heck of it. And there we go. It's placed it there. For the sake of you being able to see it, I'm going to kind of move aside and place that point out there. But what we're seeing here is we had a, a blue circle around the crosshairs, and this is my GPS location. We're also getting a little update on the level of accuracy here in this note, GPS accuracy. I'm in my basement, but somehow I'm still kind of meeting the accuracy restriction. You can see that it pulled in the trap type for you. Sorry, it's not a combo, it's just trap type. Um, and you'll need to input some other data points. So these fields, some of them have a little gray star or asterisk after them. That means they're required. If you tap on the open space, you'll get a list of options to choose from. Again, I don't know survey protocol, so this probably is going to make no sense and maybe drive some of you nuts, but I'm just going to pick. Same thing for host. Um, if I wanted to, I could start typing and come up with some options. Uh, I'll say low quad. Habitat, same. Site name, again, this is Jenny's, Jenny's protocol, not survey protocol. Trap ID. Uh, I like to make these match. Let's see. Okay, that's 03. Done. Some defaults are pulled in, like the agency. If I need to change that, I can tap it and choose something else. I'll go for state cooperator. Surveyor. Um, you can see there's a little hint here. It says first and last names. So, okay. First and last. Done it. Install date. Now this gets a little tricky for me. Um, if you'll see if I go back far enough, it does hold us to this year. So I can't enter anything outside of the year. But I have a tendency to kind of use my finger and scroll and by accident hit a date. Um, I can bring myself back to today just tapping today. 
then it brings us right back to here we are March 2nd. And the other thing I like to do once I know I've got the right date is tap to close. Get rid of that calendar so I don't accidentally tap something there. Trap site comments does not have any required. Um, there's no star there, but I'm just going to go ahead and write in test. I want to make sure everyone knows this is not real, even though I'm in a training map. And the current status begins as current. And as I said, overnight that gets updated after 14 days to do. And if a remove activity was entered, then it will be inactive. Year round is also defaulted to no, which I could change. And then there's a couple of groups here of questions that are optional. So we have optional address. It's minimized now and we can just tap it to expand and view those questions. Tap again to minimize. Again, the same thing with optional contact information. If you have that information and want to enter that, that's fine. Tap to minimize again. Quality control report. These are updated by GIS and editor, so you won't need to add anything there. But you can have a look at it. And then finally, give it one last glance. Is everything OK? Looks good to me. That's our point. Submit. And something that you might have already noticed is up here at the sync button. So this button looks different now, right? It's got a little dot on the arrow going out. And that's just a little indicator, which is kind of handy, that you do have something sitting on your offline map here on your device. And you do need to hit that sync button once you can get back to a nice Wi-Fi connection. Um, secondly, it leaves this last point as selected, that blue halo around it, and it leaves the data form open on a view mode. And so if we were going to go back and um, perform an activity on a trap, that's what we want. We want to select that trap itself. So let's do that. Let's say um, another trap, maybe this one. No, that one was inactive, right? Let's go to this guy. So we would select the trap on the map itself. You can tell it's selected because it's got that halo around it, that blue halo, you might have to kind of use your fingers to zoom in and out. And you want to be sure that you have the right trap. Probably something like the trap ID would tell you that. So make sure you're on the right trap. And then to access the linked table, there is a link button down here. So you could either tap this little link icon or you could scroll up on that data form to find that same link icon and the title is exotic moth trap activities for this year. So I'm going to go ahead and open that and you can see that there is a previous activity of replacing the lure on January 16th. You'd see like a whole list of all of those activities and to add an activity you tap the add button. And there's a little activity table here. Same kind of idea. There's required fields. There are hints here for you. And there are some defaults that you could change if you need to. I'm going to leave that. And I'm going to go ahead and type in my name. I'm going to leave activity type just so that we can have some fun with what happens. That's today. Good. Comments test. I'm going to say none for the field sample ID because I didn't collect a sample. I'm going to look back over my form and I'm going to hit submit. And I've done this on purpose because you, you know that that, that that one field is required. And so if I've missed a required field and I tap submit, I do get a little message and it does try to help you out. One attribute or they're talking about one of these fields over here failed. And what it did was it gave me a nice red little messaging there. It's this, it's this, it's this one. And if it was a really long form, if I tap view, it would move that up for me so that it was right in view or right in the middle for me to find. Okay, fine. I'm going to say this is monitor and I'm going to hit submit. And now that's successful. Um, let's say that there was a trap site that you felt like uh, needed an edit that you, you maybe you put the wrong host or something needs to be changed there. You would follow a similar um, way of doing it in that you would select it. So I'll try it on this guy. Select that trap. And then we have a little pencil here. Um, the pencil we all know is an edit option. But the other thing you could do is scroll up once you've determined that's the right one scroll up and find edit here, the pencil. Once you tap edit, that opens that data form to editing entirely. So whatever it is you need to change, um, carefully do that. I'll, um, I'll change the host here to artichoke. And then you wanna 
give it one more glance and make sure everything else is good. And just, just like any other edit, you're going to hit submit. And there you go. Now we know we've got actually a few things to sync here. And so if I wanted to, if I tap sync, I can see the list of the three edits that you and I have just done here together. And, and then I could go ahead and sync when I was ready just by tapping that button. I'm not going to do it. We've already risked enough iPad stuff today. So I'm not going to do that and, and uh, risk slowing us down. But I do want to look at that other layer, the map notes points layer. And, uh, and what the intention of that is, is to share hazards or information with each other. So that layer is shared with everyone. So be, be sure if you're sharing things on that layer that it's appropriate to share, but otherwise it's meant to help each other out a little. Um, so let's enter data on that. So with that layer active, as you see, it's active or enabled. If I hit this plus button to add data, that layer is below our trap sites layer. So here it is down below. You may have to scroll a bit. Um, and then you choose hazard or info. So I, I'm just for an example, I'm going to choose info. And we have a really brief little data form here. But I thought, well, you know, might be nice to know that this little park here is full of shade. So I'm going to update the point for over there. See, we've got the little symbol there now. And the note type is info. Surveyor, again, I'll put my name in. Comments are very important because you can't just have a point in this in this case, you do want information about this information. <laughs> right. So what information do you want here? Well, um, I thought maybe a shady lunch spot. With. I'll say public restroom. That's kind of helpful, right? OK, and then I'll close the keyboard and then we want to note date and that's today and submit just that easy but just meant to help you out a hazard could be something like um, environmental hazards like maybe this isn't a good place for a trap um, maybe a mean dog or a neighbor that's not helpful um, things like that maybe could be helpful there it's definitely speak with your supervisor and find out you know what how that matches what needs to be here but just note that this layer is for everyone so you can see if i if i select that note we've got the note there and all the information around it all righty um let's see if i missed anything on my list i don't think so so far so good so we went over the trap sites layer and the act activities table associated with it. And then we did dive into the map notes points layer. Just remember that the difference between um, the iPhone and the iPad, it kind of, uh, you know, it just takes up part of the screen and you can slide the data form up and down so that it takes the full screen and, and toggle between map and such. But otherwise, everything there is the same. The buttons are the same. You'd see the same the same sync button, you download an offline map and um, make all of the same efforts to prepare as you would in an iPad. So a couple of reminders then, um, you know, we're just hitting this, make sure that you're in the right portal, be sure that you're using the official data collection map when you're collecting official data. And if you're playing around, which we really encourage, um, like today, use that training map, but make sure you sign back out and make sure you're in the right portal. A couple ways of doing that is looking at the map title and the base map, that, those are the big hints there. Definitely use a disconnected mode. Be sure that you are downloading an offline map and using that. And the daily data sync has become more and more critical, especially with those nightly scripts being run that update your status and kind of keep you up to date. So I recommend that being done twice a day if it's possible for you. It's, it'd be really helpful for you to do that in the morning to be sure even things like map notes are there for you that maybe your fellow colleagues might have added the day before. So make sure that you're doing that. And I would recommend morning and evening for the daily data sync. Be careful with your data collection. Um, this is really more of a personal problem. I think I'm just admitting that I have my own issues. I can't tell you how many times I've even misspelled my own name. So I always give it one more look through, finish that data form. But before you hit submit, just take one more moment and overlook the data that's been entered and make sure that it's right. The map notes layer, it's an excellent layer to record hazards and information. Just remember that it is shared across 
for all so everyone sees that make sure that what you're putting in there is appropriate um, and conversely the markup layer which exists in all ArcGIS um, or ArcGIS field maps applications it's just kind of a default that's there that feature is a little risky it's kind of like writing in your diary make sure no real data no official stuff goes into that layer and just note that it is private to your device unless you find a way to share it and then finally that submit button fail we um, we did let it fail today so the reasons that it might fail is if a required field is not entered and it can also fail if you don't meet your gps requirements so be sure that you're meeting that um, for that submit button we all experienced together today some iPad fail. <laughs> um, and it happens to the best of us and it happens out of nowhere um, sometimes. But there's lots of things that you might still need support on. So I've kind of gathered this little list for getting help. Um, all things survey protocol, anything about the exotic <coughs> moth program, go to Lisa Jackson. She's your go-to for, um, for this pest program as the national operations manager. Um, I've got listed here iPad issues, but that includes iPhone issues. Uh, our devices are supported by CEC IT. So if you're having an issue, which I may have to do myself today, open a ticket with CEC and, and get them to support you on that. Access to the maps themselves or a role so that you can edit this data, anything regarding um, having access to this, or even the field maps application itself, start with your supervisor. That's why I put in this order. Start with your supervisor. They know what to do. Um, your supervisor might themselves reach out to the local field GIS specialist supporting your area. They may also email this webgis.connect at usda.gov to get a group support with lots of brains on something. Um, anything training related, EUTG stands for End User Tools Group. That's my group. Remember that mobile data collection tools web page. Go there for all things. It's, it's updated very frequently, often daily at this time of the year. And we're constantly trying to add things there to help you out. Let us know if you need something more there as well which makes me think this is a good time to add that link into the chat again um, so that that's the link there for the mobile data collection tools web page and the quiz so this is what we kind of went over today we were able to get into that field maps application we looked into signing in and out a little bit between the official portal and the training or stage portal. We talked a lot about the disconnected workflow, trying to make sure that we were using an offline map and synchronizing appropriately. We went through the two layers that you can edit, the trap site layer with its activity table and the map points layer. And we looked at the data forms. In fact, we were able to enter data ourselves in the training map just for fun. And then we went over some reminders for you to be careful of. Don't forget that quiz. Just one last little, um, you know, ping for the quiz. It's a great time for you to test your knowledge and just make sure that the things that we learned here today make sense to you and, and kind of help you just get out there and start collecting data. And finally, I've given you a lot of options for resources, but I certainly include myself. And you are welcome to reach out to myself or anyone on my team at any point if there's something that we can help you with. So at this point, I just like to pause also and say, are there any questions? Um, if you feel more comfortable, you're welcome to put it in the chat. I'm going to look there too. I see something going on there. Um, but is there anything that I could show you in a little more detail? or attempt to show you, I should say, in a little more detail or walk you through. What a training today. <laughs> um, I'll just say I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you on this slide. If you need help, please reach out to us. We'd love to help you make sure that things are working as they should. And, um, you know, we, it's great to see, uh, you know, even the, even though I'm sitting in my basement with all things set up ahead of time that iPads can throw you surprises sometimes and uh, tech 
technology sometimes has its things. Again, staying on the path is the best way. So being up to date for the most part avoids a lot of these issues. And I just, uh, I appreciate your patience today with this one and listening to me and being here early and ready to be responsible data collectors. I'll just let you go with uh, a big old thank you. Thank you for your patience and good luck out there.